All right. Welcome everybody to uh, to this first time on jumping uh, Q and A. Now, unfortunately, there's no uh, automated way to uh, let everyone in or let everyone in automatically. So I'm just going to have to do that bit by bit. So this is your host and loving sermon, Jim Tortsakis of returntoyourtruth.com. And let's see how we go with, our, with me knowing Zoom well enough <laughs> to make sure things go smoothly. So being the first Q&A, for timeline jumping, you know, it's going to be a comparatively smaller, more intimate group. And it's really wonderful to see you here. And what I'm going to do is each week, I'm going to start off with a, a five at the most uh, a 10 minute session. And, um, you know, kind of lesson I should say not session and then we'll jump straight into helping you out directly and um so I'm looking forward to it this is uh great to see you all here okay let me see if I can do the pinning thing no that didn't do much all right let's move you up here all right so wonderful um so let's begin. Where um, I'm going to start off with a personal experience uh, in terms of the critical importance of transmuting entities. And this is a good example of how quite often their interference is subtle in nature, but sometimes it's not. And a good example of this is. Okay, so I caught a bit of a head cold over the past six days or so. And it got sort of bad on, on one day. And, uh, you know, it. what would happen is I would get these horrible uh, spasms and outbreaks of sneezing, runny nose and fever. And I thought, okay, it wasn't that bad. I thought, I wonder if an entity is agitating or amplifying something that's already there. Because a lot of the time, that's what they do. Yes, they can and do in engineer um, events subtly from the background in order to create a bad situation, which, which then creates the negative energy that they live off of. And, and that they use and need for energy. That does happen a lot. But the other thing that they do is that they amplify or agitate something that's already there, already going on within you. So if you're, you know, worried about something, they're going to amplify that and it'll become a very destabilizing anxiousness, a very ungrounded anxiousness or, or even fear. Um, you know, if you're annoyed by something, not necessarily upset, but annoyed by something, um, they're going to amplify that and they're going to turn to extreme anger and, and flippiness. Um, especially if it's something pre-existing internally. So in the case of my head cold, Okay, I got a bit of a head cold. I'll blow my nose occasionally and not feeling too good and whatever. Moving on, right? We all soldier through minor um, head colds. But then, I don't know, about two or three times a day, these severe sneezing spasms. 
very severe sneezing spasms um, would occur. And with, with fever and, and a very runny nose, and it'd be quite debilitating, of course. So I thought, let me check to see if this sudden agitation of something that's already there is caused by an entity. Because sometimes it's not, you know, sometimes it could be, uh, in my case, uh, seasonal allergies. Okay. But even so, um, they would still jump on what's already there. That's what they often do. So I checked for an entity, saw it, you know, quite often a fuzzy, slightly fuzzy gray image. It doesn't matter if you don't see it perfectly. And uh, transmuted it, tracked back to the source and transmuted that, all right, per the how to transmute on the fly audio that you have as members. And lo and behold, um, quite comfortably within a minute, if not straight away, the spasming, severe sneezing, nonstop sneezing and, and, and watery eyes and fever and runny nose uh, stopped to a, I'm going to say 99% degree. All right, pretty much stopped. And it happened, you know, it's, it's been happening maybe twice a day. And again, that being di disabled like that, because you can't do anything in that sort of, in, in that kind of situation, you're, you know, you start to feel either anger or frustration, maybe even depression or disillusionment, whatever that case may be, because now you're disabled because of that being so agitated, whatever that may be, my case of sneezing and fever spasms. And they absorb that as energy. So, and I say this because, as I say in the webinar, the timeline jumping webinar, it's it's nothing to even bother worrying about. Don't bother worrying about it. Don't bother being upset about it or concerned about it or have any fear over it. Because again, like I said in the um the masterclass, you know, you've already been living with them your whole life already. And um of course they're being cleared off the planet en masse. All right. Yeah, obviously it's taken a lot because we're talking we're talking multiple civilizations, multiple, you know, non-physical planes and subplanes that they're being cleared off of once and for all. So, you know, you don't clear a whole civilization of non-physicals overnight. It doesn't work that way. You can actually. Um so that's just I want to start off this Q and A with that. I don't know, not just a more than just a reminder, clarity of how much they can be an influence. So, if something happens, even if it's just a frustration, even if you just feel boredom. Because boredom is actually massively under-recognized negative energy. You know, something that appears neutral, it's not. It's extremely negative energy. Um, let alone if something bad happens. A good modus operandi to employ is, you know, my partner and I have come up with the term stop, drop, and clear. Although we're, we have to be... I don't know, militaristic about it because, you know, of the uh, planetary work that we're involved in. But of course, many of you are as well. So what, what you want to do is something bad happens or even if it's just a frustration or an, an emotion getting pretty amplified when, when it shouldn't, okay? The first thing you want to do is use the how to transmute on the fly process and train and just look all right because 
the combination of your consciousness and your intent. Um, well, let's just say it reveals all. Okay, really is like doing that particular search term in the search engine. That's your intent. And, and the search engine is your consciousness. You know, you, you're going to find it. So you use that method, look for the entity, hold the intent of finding the entity or seeing the entity. It's not about finding per se, it's about seeing it because it's there, okay? It exists wherever it may be, quite often around or in your field. So you find the entity that, or you see the entity that is behind XYZ negative event or is behind a negative energy that you may be feeling. All right. So something that just happened. Um, you transmute it, track back to source, transmute the source using the method in the audio. And then if that doesn't clear the problem, if you're not fairly balanced and grounded and calm and centered, look for the entity that's either that's seized on the opportunity because um, sometimes there's another entity that's sort of seized on the opportunity to, to feed off of the negative energy and use and, and, and in other words, hold the, you now hold the intent to look for an, an entity that's agitating or amplifying X, Y, Z negative emotion. Okay. And that gets you balanced, calm, grounded, which is the only place that will allow you to get anywhere anyway because you generally have to be in that state. And of course, you've just nudged up significantly your personal timeline uh, a couple of notches. You know, every time you clear an entity, your frequency goes up a notch, which means you bump up in personal timeline. So which more often than not, you know, I'm not going to be absolute about it. More often than not, nudges you in that direction, in a better direction, or even in just a slightly better direction, rather than in this direction, which is not as good, or let alone negative. Okay. And the slightly better direction, as you can easily imagine, quite often uh, leads to a much better direction. You know, it really is like the... Uh, the train tracks crisscrossing each other on, in that massive metropolitan train junction. Okay. We see all these train tracks crisscrossing, running parallel for the most part, and then crisscrossing that way, and then crisscrossing with the other way. So, you know, get practiced at it, get sort of accustomed at it, get used to doing it. And I always start my day uh, with, you know, transmitting three entities. For some reason, in my personal experience, three seems to be the, the magic number, probably because it changes the timeline significantly enough where it makes a significant difference. In, some, in many cases, a big difference. I transmit three entities in the morning and I sort of use that as a kind of meditative thing because you do have to sit still, focus inwardly. I mean, you can do it casually and quickly, but you still, as with any kind of energy work, you need a certain amount of stillness, centeredness and, and, and focus. And it's important to practice at that, to rewire the brain, to function that more quickly and easily the more you do it. Um, so the intent that I sort of hold in my mind, you know, in the form of a question, when I do this in the morning before I start my day is, you know, what I say, you know, I put myself in that white sphere, see myself 
either the physical form or holographic form. That way it's easiest to see what's inside you just in case. And you ask the question, what is the highest priority block from me having an awesome day today? Okay. Now, don't worry, you will get the recording for this. So that's what I say. I just, you know, quickly, nonchalantly, casually hold that intent. Okay. What's the highest priority block to me having an awesome day today? And then you have the, uh, I don't know, an allowance, a mental allowance to allow something to coalesce into a certain kind of form, okay? And, you know, you don't have to see clearly. I often see a somewhat faint light gray or dark gray um, image of, of, a, of a shape. You know, um, some entities are a little amorphous in nature. Okay, so, you know, stretch your mind, in a sense. Um, so, and, uh, so that's recommended. It's something I practice myself. Um, you know, clearly not going to tell you to do something that I don't do myself. And... This shifts the day, okay? Because even if a particular entity or two is not doing much, because, you know, they're quite often around the surface of the planet in the non-physical sense, even if they're not doing much, they're either waiting for something to happen or engineering subtly for something to happen. Okay, so... What an ideal time to get rid of it in, in the morning, you know, while you're drinking your tea or coffee, sit down for five, 10 minutes and do that. I'll do it. I, I admit I do it in the bathroom. <laughs> um, sorry for the TMI. And that's strongly recommended. I've been practicing that doing this morning ritual. For, oh God, 2010, 2011. And another thing you could do, so we've all done those metaphysical lessons, law of attraction, so forth, which is visualize what you want and feel as if you already have it. You know, do that five minute morning visualization and feel as if and so on and so forth. That's still good to do, okay? And let's face it, after a few years of that, you, most people don't end up doing it consistently, but I'll get into that later. That's still good to do, not just for metaphysical and attraction reasons, because those principles are true, just highly incomplete. But um, you want to, that, that's good for when you're in that state, and feeling as if and visualizing what you want, it does a good job of bringing up stuff, bringing up either internal or external interference so you can spot it and transmute it uh, because it raises your frequency because you're getting close to your goal, ascending to that timeline because you're visualizing it, you're, you're imagining it and, and feeling as if and so on and so forth. So you can do that five minute, you know, that traditional metaphysical practice that all the metaphysical gurus teach to feel as if you already have what you want and, and visualize it and so forth for five minutes. And five minutes is enough. You know, use the timer on your phone. And you'd be, you'd be amazed at how fast five minutes fly when you use your phone's timer. And... Um, and then transmute three entities, okay? So you can do that as well. That's a good technique, all right? Um, now, the thing about that, you know, classic old metaphysical principles of visualizing what you want, 
is that you can only know what you want or think you know what you want from your current level of consciousness, okay? Uh, which is a problem, okay? Uh, quite often, what we want is not our highest good, is, is will actually bring a lot more trouble, okay? Um, do more harm than good. Um, and no, it's not so much because of duality or that kind of thing. It's not quite it. Yes, it's part of it, but not quite it. Um, but the thing is, we can only ever w want something from our current level of consciousness. And that is a, a that is a, an issue uh, that I'll get into in maybe the, the next Q&A. So with that bit of training and coaching out of the way, let me um, open up. What I'm going to do is I'm going to enable chat. Uh, let me see here. I'm going to enable chat. Oh, there you are. Um, okay. All right, let me see here. All right. I'm looking for the chat. It ain't really coming up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to... I'm going to stop screen sharing. Maybe that's blocking chat. Okay. Bear with me, everybody. Ah, here we go. Okay. Let me put this up here. So you should all be able to chat. Okay. Um, okay, we got the... Um, so type in a question. I may unmute as well. Um, we'll see. Okay. Michelle, uh, can the transmute on the fly exercise be used for relieving of medical symptoms like headaches? Um, or is it more for emotional related problems? Um, it's for pretty much anything. So in the case of headaches, um, in the case of headaches, you'll want to look at your head holographically and and just you know see see the eyes just see the basic most basic features of your head so make out the eyes and the nose and the mouth and and the brain again you don't have to see it perfectly because the higher mind the higher psychic mind does know you kind of does know everything in a sense and you look for that for the physical or non-physical cause. Okay, I was about to say symptom, uh, but the cause. Okay, so it might be just a little dark grey or black amorphous little thing it's in one of your two hemispheres of the brain or in the endocrine area, you know, it could be uh, an entity, a, you know, an entity in your head or just outside your head or in your field, okay? So that's what you do. Um, you, you look for what's inside your head, okay, holographically, transmute it using the same method as the audio that you have and you know sometimes it doesn't go away straight away okay and it could be anything from an entity to a portal to a little amorphous thing could be anything turn it white okay and finish up with the uh transmutation method 
that you have. And, and then if it doesn't go away, then you look for an entity. You know, um, either inside or outside your head. So that's partly a bit of an energy surgery kind of thing. And you, you use the same technique and the same transmutation principles as in the audio to see and clear anything within your body, okay? The non-physical aspects of your body. Um, in some cases, physical aspect, but, you know, like if you want to clear physical parasites, uh, physical uh, toxins, that's where you got to use, I suppose, a bit more intense focus and hold it there for a bit longer. Um, and quote unquote, imagine the molecules just breaking apart of the physical um, object. Because when you're projecting your, con projecting your consciousness from the same plane to the same plane of existence, um, it's a bit of a different energetic dynamic. It's a different animal. Um, you have to put a bit more in whole focus there for a good two minutes, enough for the molecules of said object to the physical molecules of said object to break apart. Okay. Um, so yeah, um, I hope that answered, answered your question. Um, so anyone else have a question, go ahead and, uh, type it in. Um, will the practice work if we do it for others or our pets? Uh, yes, um, is the short answer. Um, now the higher self of others will sort of to one degree or another, um, hit the brakes if it's not for their highest good. Okay. Um, you know, you can ask permission of the other person's higher self or the pet's higher self, if you can do this for them, um, as well. Uh, but the short answer is yes, you can. Um, all righty, let me see here. Okay. Now, like I said, you will get the recording uh, for this. Um, and if, uh, if none of you have any other questions, um, what I'll do is, okay, Kalki, all right. I seem to not see things as well. I feel physical discomfort. Um, and by not seeing things as well, I assume you mean the non-physical, seeing the non-physical. I get frustrated because, sure. Uh, because even when I have awareness of something, I have difficulty transmuting it. Okay. So that means, how can I put it? It either means you're putting too much effort or you're having trouble just holding still mentally and holding a focus on a vision, that inward focus. And there could be 101 reason, reasons for that other than putting in too much effort. But really, 60 to 70% of psychic seeing is simply being able to look inward, hold, and, and hold the vision, hold an image, even if it's just a color, and being able to hold that. You know, that, that's 70% of the battle, so to speak, of being able to see perfectly well psychically. Now, one thing to be aware um, is if your head, if your internal self is still relatively noisy, 
meaning full of stuff, full of unresolved stuff, um, unresolved internal blocks, especially soul level stuff. You know, that does create noise, a lot of noise, energy, you know, metaphorically speaking. And it's hard to hold focus. It's hard to be in stillness and steadiness because there's a certain amount of stillness and steadiness to be able to, that you need to be able to see psychically. A certain amount of calmness and detachment. And, you know, so keep on doing, well, for the most part, uh, soul fabric retrieval okay and that kind of thing soul fragment retrieval soul fragment retrieval retrieval being at the core of internal healing because that lowers the noise inside you know yeah it's a bit hard to see psychically when you got the equivalent of a loud radio playing loud music from all the unresolved internal stuff still going on. Uh, still perfectly possible, doable. God knows I was pretty noisy inside some time ago, but I was still able to do energy work because I was, you know, I was taking it seriously, um, you know, and, 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 and dedicated and disciplined. You know, I made sure initially I was doing it three times a week, then I was able to bring it, this is soft ramming retrieval type work and just pulling out and transmuting entities. Um, and entities are extremely noisy, not just dense, that lowers your frequency, which then lowers your timeline. So I would do that initially three times a week when I first learned this stuff, and then eventually a year later, twice a week. And now, now it's, and then once a week, and then now it's barely once a month, and I do it on the fly because I've gained that, you know, my mind's accustomed to it. The wiring is fairly well written into my brain's neurology. You know, I, you know, you can, I do it on the fly in many cases without having to go up to the uh, gamalgam. So, you know, you can get there. Okay, so I hope that helped. Um, let me see here. All right. Bear with me. Um, uh, when you were talking about entities, what came to mind were these supposed dark entities that feed off of Lush? Uh, correct. The energy that is put off by the population when they are put in a state of fear. How would you deal with that? These are unseen and unknown entities. Um, you simply don't worry now about the general population. All right. You know, you know, if there's a mass meditation group <laughs> that you know of, definitely there, there's your opportunity to do something about that, about you know, the global and collective side of things. But other than that, only, you know, within reason, only worry about yourself and keeping your field clear and making sure that you actually are alone and that you have no uninvited guests. And simply just thinking of something is, is more than enough to, to see it, to notice it. Okay. Follow the how to transmit on the fly method. You know, you can, once you listen to that audio a few times, you know, I'd recommend in the morning and in, in the beginning, you know, eventually, even, at, in, even after as little as three listens, you know, you won't need it because it's relatively straightforward. And you, you pretty much do it on the fly, as the title says. Um, how would you deal with that? These are uh, unseen and unknown entities. Um, so they're only unseen and unknown entities to us and the collective in 
because of conditioning, mental conditioning, mental programs. It, you rest assured, you can perfectly see them. Once you validate that and accept that to remove that mental block in the mental body as a false, not just a false belief, it's kind of like a false presupposition, isn't it? Sort of presupposing that they're unseen and unknown. No, they're perfectly seen, perfectly known. You just got to look, acknowledge and, and look at a certain look at them a certain way you know um so so remove that kind of premise of these are unseen and unknown they're not use the audio practice at it okay so how to transmit on a fly i don't know if, the, if that's in week two or week three i can't remember right now um you know, I'd do it for seven days straight in the mornings to really help the mind start creating those new neural pathways and get rid of the uh, presupposed belief that they are unseen and unknown. You know, they're not. So, all righty. Uh, I am, let me see, Colk. Uh, I am targeted every day. I am targeted every night by very uncomfortable energies. This would interfere. These targeted energies leave behind demons. I also get severe pain in my right knee and wrist at night. Okay, so their presence at night, notice how it only happens at night. You know, when really you think it would happen during the the day when you're out and about and actually using your wrist and knee and you're perfectly conscious awake and aware so it's the presence of these so-called demons that amplify what's already there you know in your case you know we're all predisposed to certain things we all have certain kind of weaknesses and that's what they typically go for all right. Um, so if you have a weak knee and weak wrist, or if there's physical toxins that are clogged up there for, for whatever reason, yep, they're going to amplify that, you know, because really the problem's always there, but they just amplify it. Now, so what you do is you realize, first of all, you got to take that mental awareness, that mental leap, mental jump, that you can take control of the situation. Believe me, I'm talking from experience. And that you can do it yourself. You know, sometimes the mental block in the mental body is faith and trust in yourself. You know, are you accustomed to really trusting yourself? Trust is a big deal word in the world of energy and working with energy and metaphysics. You know, do, do you hold yourself in high enough regard to where you can do this and take control of such a situation? And, you know, you got to have a go. you got to take a go. I'm going to, for tonight, I'm just going to trust myself. I'm going to take that mental leap. I'm going to hold the belief that I can do it and I can take control of the situation that I can do it. I'm big enough to do this. And this is how, you know, we all start making those incremental, small, but critical steps towards the natural and intrinsic bigness of your true identity. And your high self and your guides are always rooting for you whenever you, you know, show a bit of courage, throw caution to the wind and just go for it. All righty. So what you want to do, um, Kalki, is you want to, I often need to sit upright, you know, 
and use the how to transmit on the fly method. And you know, hold the intent or ask a question, sort of the same thing. Okay. And you can use your higher self if you want, but otherwise you just allow yourself to see, okay, where are these, you know, see yourself there and, and use the method and the so-called demons will show up. All right. And you use the transmutation method to get rid of them one after the other. Okay. It, it can be done fairly quickly. Um, even as little as 30 seconds. Um, you know, and you make sure they're all gone. Sometimes there's one, sometimes there's two or three. Okay. Um, and if that doesn't, and then you look at your, in your case, Kalki, your, your left wrist, uh, your wrist and your knee, and you briefly, casually, quote unquote, imagine what it would look like if you could see it holographically and look for any dark stuff, you know, quite often it won't have form. It's just an amorphous or shapeless thing. Sometimes it will have some kind of shape, whatever. And look for anything that's, you know, non-physical that could be amplifying or, or agitating the pain and use the same transmutation method. Okay, so again, as always, change the background color to help out so you can see the white light better and and clear your wrist and, um, and knee that way because quite often a certain amount of discomfort and weakness is often turned into pain by black plasma type amorphous dark gray blackness in and around um you know the uh the the part of your body that's hurting and you know i typically when i used to do one-on-ones i would look at a person's like one lovely lady's left wrist was pretty painful she injured it pretty painful um i transmute this etheric or maybe it was plasma don't worry about what it is just transmute the damn thing transmuted it and you know she was able to move her wrist a fair bit where she couldn't before uh, with little, little to no pain you know there was still some physical stiffness there they still limited her movement but the pain you know that that emotional charge of that pain that's the darkness contribution there <laughs> okay that's the darkness part and that you can clear on the fly. Um, so do that, Kalki. And, you know, the following night, if um, those so-called demons uh, uh, reappear, then that just means there's a portal or small little vortex, either in your field or in your body or somewhere in your room or somewhere in your house. Okay, you look for their, that portal or vortex you use the same how to transmit on the fly method and close it. Okay. So that's what to do. That's what you need to do next and, and do go for it. Have a bit of faith and trust in yourself. Um, believe me, I struggled with that as well. Now, just as an, an aside, I, I might, I'm not actually, a big fan of the word demons um, because of the religious and somewhat colored connotation to it. The proper term and the, and the clinical term for so-called demons is negative entities. Um, now, negative entities that have a hominid body, yes, I have called them demons if they have a hominid body, um, like, a, like a human or a lot of the you know, extraterrestrials. But yeah, generally the proper term is negative entities. Let's be professionals about this. Alrighty.
Uh, Michelle, will we always have access to the course site or is it for a limited time? Um, certainly 12 months. Uh, but come to think of it, I haven't put any uh, time limits on it. Uh, I'm not really planning on to. Um, so the answer is no. Okay. But you certainly, as each module gets unlocked after every, every seven days, okay, to prevent overwhelm and give you a chance to get really get used to that given week's um, tool, you definitely want to go to town with the DNA codes. And uh, I believe the implant removal codes and, you know, cause you can wear them in whatever part of the body you feel like you need it. Uh, really powerful frequencies come through those codes and, and the DNA codes, they do kind of charge you up. Like I said, in the, uh, the webinar masterclass. So make sure you use those. And I think it's on your third month uh, or even as early as, your, uh, as early as your second month, if you've really been doing internal work for a number of years, wear them in your pockets facing inward. And then after the second month, um, I tape into my feet. Okay, I tape, I use those 3M skin tapes, that beige skin color type is sort of elastic from Walgreens or CVS. And, um, you know, I tape them to my feet and it really helps a lot. Okay, really keeps and maintains and builds upon DNA activation and clearing. Um, okay. Uh, da, 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 da. Um, also targeted by what I call drone attacks when going out. Okay. So at this point, Kalki, uh, this is become, be, you know, becoming to look more like a, a past life imprint, which you'll want to do a software retrieval on, where we were heavily tracked by all sorts of technology, especially back in late Atlantis. So incorporate that into your new weekly practice. Uh, and what you can do immediately, other than the previous advice that I gave you, is you... Um, you look at your auric membrane, membrane, your outer auric membrane, and make sure there's no holes that have been poked or caused by these drone type of attacks. And then always make an assumption that it's a non-physical kind of technology, a non-physical anti-gravity type um, drone kind of thing. All right. Um, and I assume that it's not physical and then I look for it. I use the same how to transmit on the fly method. Look for it, transmute it. Okay. And you just keep on doing that. And if after a week or two of doing this a few times, if it's, it's if it still happens, then it's probably from the physical plane. Okay. Um, from this, you know, as in one example, those so-called FBI, CIA fusion centers type things that can cause that through the technologies. They used to do it through computers and mobile phones, but that's uh, pretty much shut down. They've been trying to hack back into it, but it's pretty much shut down. But they still have those fusion centers. Uh, 5G towers, they're losing control of that. But I digress. So use that method as well, Kalki. Okay. Um, and yeah, get used to transmuting and clearing, you know, you will get there. Just, you just need a bit of practice. Um, all right. Let me see. Yeah. He's transmuting more about removing our mental blocks, thus freeing 
our power to deal with the situation. Um, let me let me handle that first portion. Is transmuting more about moving our mental blocks, thus freeing our power to deal with the situation. Um, yes or no. Um, simply holding a false belief or program or that precipitates a false sort of presupposition or assumption and realizing the truth about it okay from an external source such as me telling you now um that clears sort of instantaneously clears those those mental blocks within the mental body and it can happen instantaneously the other method and that therefore happens instantaneously the other method is you may not be aware of a given mental block in the mental body that you have. You know, most of us aren't until we stumble across the, a truth. Okay. Hence the term truth, truth bombs or red pilling. Um, but yeah, typically we're not aware of what false or negative uh, blocks we have in the mental body in the form of beliefs and programs. So you can holographic. So one another method that you can do is look at your mental body holographically, and on the mental plane slash mental body, you know false beliefs, mental blocks, um, false or negative programs, they have form. Okay, like I don't know, like a brick, you know. Um, and because it's negative or false, it'll be dense. So it'll come up as dark gray or, or, or black. All right. Because anything that's connected or causing or associated with negativity, darkness, falseness, illusion presented, presented in that color because our rational minds associate that color with darkness itself. Okay. The dark gray kind of or even some cases light gray sort of color um and you use the same principles same method of the how to transmute on the fly audio um and hear it without knowing what the mental what the actual belief or program or presupposition was okay um so and then, you know, that may, that may extend outward into your outer so-called reality as all of a sudden you discover the truth about something or you realize, I don't know, some, something you bought as a lie a long time ago. You realize, no, that's not true, actually. I'm starting to question that. Or, or you come across a video that, your, you know, blows your conscious, rational mind apart in the positive sense. You know, it helps precipitate. What I'm trying to say is, if there's something that your conscious mind needs to become aware of and catch up, conscious of, after clearing a negative, these blocks from the mental body, it more attracts itself to finding that out in the physical, okay? Because you cleared it, in the mental body. So I have to make sense. Uh, let me read out the rest. Or does it also have an impact on the energy profile around us affecting the entity? So it does, whenever you clear your inter internal, it pretty much always um, have an impact on the energy profile around you. In other words, your field, also known as your hologram, your so-called outer reality. It always has an effect on that. Um, now, in terms of entity, sometimes it typically 
either an internal or external entity's sort of jabs at that false beliefs and it sort of amplifies it and sort of forces it up forces it up into the conscious mind um you know sort of triggers it especially when you're thinking about something and you're trying to find out the truth about something or you're having a conversation about someone and they mention something that's directly connected or related to that false belief and then that comes up and sometimes an entity amplifies it but there's not always an entity involved per se they can utilize it because or amplify it because you're predisposed to it because that negative mental block is there for it to use that can happen um you know but other than that not really don't have to worry about an entity I was thinking about the example on the encounter you had with the law enforcement officer you related to us last week. If you would comment in relation to that. All right. So that was okay. When you're driving, when you're driving along a road and you're doing five or 10 or 20 miles above the speed limit of course you're in australia you're in trouble if you do three kilometers above the speed limit <laughs> um you know you're how can i put it okay you're now in a sense vulnerable more likelihood a stronger scenario of xyz happening which in this case is being pulled over and they sort of try to seize on that, try to utilize that to help ensure that you get pulled over. All right. Um, you know, you could easily get away with it. You know, they don't always um, pull you over or have the ability to create that sort of situation, these entities. Um, and now, you know, and, and if you were to stick to the speed limit, it makes it much, much harder for entities to engineer uh, a negative event. Still possible because, you know, you can still get pulled over randomly for a license check, like what they do in Australia all the time. Okay. Um, you know, or your car's not registered or not assured that kind of thing makes it easier for them to engineer a negative event of being pulled over. Uh, if not, your car's insured, your registration is up to date, you're doing the speed limit, then it's much, much harder for them to engineer subtly from behind the scenes that negative event of being pulled over. Okay. So there's still things you can do from a... 3D practical level to reduce, minimize the likelihood of them being able to engineer events. All right. And that's where they start working through other people kind of, kind of thing. Anyway, so, okay. So, anyway, I got pulled over. And for a lot of us, we're not in a position where we can afford the, you know, the, the implications and ramifications of, of being pulled over. We can't afford the extra demerit points. We can't afford um, the, the fine. We may not have the money to pay the fine and so on and so forth. Okay. Regardless, you're in a negative state because you've been pulled over. You're in a bit of trouble now. So you are given off negative emotions, negative energy, which they feed on. And they jump on that to both feed on that, absorb that energy because it energizes them, but also amplify and agitate it, make you really panic, insert false beliefs and the worst possible scenario in your mind, yada, 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 um, so that you give off more amplified, right? They agitate, amplified negative emotions, which then they get more food from, okay? Um, 
you know, thankfully I was practiced enough where I would just keep on transmuting away um, to where the negative emotions start to go, things get calmer, the cop turns out to be a swell guy because the more you transmute, the more you go up in timelines, you know. Um, so that's, I hope that answers your question, you know. Let me know if it didn't. And it's just, there's just one more little aspect or nuance you need explained. Okay. Uh, when we print the codes, should they be printed on both sides of the paper or just on one side? Okay. Uh, reasonable questions, are we? Uh, I should have mentioned um, in the instruction manual. One side is enough. Okay. The codes can be printed and be on only one side, and that's totally plenty. Um, recommended to get, get them laminated uh, so they don't get worn out, you know. Um, okay. Uh, the first time a drone attack occurred, my cell phone overheated and stopped working. Um, yeah, again, they tend to... Well, first of all, the first time, this so-called drone attack occurred and your phone overheated, that suggests, it could be one of two things. It suggests that your, let me see. Um, you know, if your phone overheated, it suggests that A, they were either attacking you through the phone, okay, um, or that external drone attack caused you know, your phone and yourself to go a little bit haywire and react, understandably. Now, with your phone, um, you, you'll you want to get one of those, and I don't necessarily recommend just any kind of sticker, uh, but grab one of those little sticker type things, little disc shape things that you stick at the back of your phone, all right? Um, and once you do that, um, you'll uh, you'll know you, your your phone will start to cool down and be cooler once you put one of those things on the back of your phone. Um, if you don't know any resources, there's a few out there now. Um, Q Q Wave, I think it is. They got those little mobile phone stickers. Um, Oops, wrong way around. You know, they have, that's one of several companies at this point that have them. Okay, good. I just want to make sure. Um, now, up until very recently, they did use phones a lot to attack us through. Apparently, they've lost that ability very recently um so anyway moving on um all right now all right let me see here what i'm going to do is okay chat pin all right okay so um any any last questions? We're past hour one. I'm trying to keep it to within an hour. So any last questions? Um, you know, just feel free to actually see if there's a if you do have a question, um, you can hover over the the participants list on the right and see if you have an option to that says ask to unmute um, or raise your hand, that kind of thing. And I'll unmute you. So we can, I wanna get practiced at answering, you know, a, a voice or verbal um, question. Okay, let me see here. Uh, Yep, I do have allowed participants to unmute themselves, but I think I need to do it 
manually on this end anyway, but you can unmute yourself. Um, so anyway, before I close this first Q and A, which obviously has some pretty important, very empowering uh, training and tips in it. Um, you know, go ahead and raise your your hand if such a feature exists and or, or ask to be unmuted, whatever option there is for you. Um, so you can so you can ask and I'll unmute you. Um, or if you can't find any such options, go ahead and type it in. Um, otherwise, I will uh, end. Uh, this first Q and A and close it for now and uh, get the recording out. So um, you know, some of you, if you're listening to this in the recording, just keep at it, stick with it, okay, and um, really go for it, okay. Um, so it was a real, a real pleasure having you on and uh in obviously in two two weeks time we're going to have the second q a you're welcome coffee you have a wonderful morning or afternoon or night wherever you are um yeah have a have a, a wonderful day or night wherever you are and i will see you in roughly two weeks time and take care and go for it and pursue your dreams. All right, bye for now.